In this episode of Straight From The Desk, we will talk about a pretty cool little technique that I came up with. It's actually called tea stain weathering and it might be the most British weathering of all times. Um, sometimes it's strange how these um, ideas come up. And uh, for this one, I was actually um, doing like a color concept for a, um, like a garage kit style model um, for a friend of ours. And um, I used the concrete like texture and, uh, as the goal was actually to come up with a color concept that we are also able to transfer later on to that uh, larger scale model. It was supposed to be like 30 centimeters large. Um, and I was sitting there and uh, a lot of you guys know that I'm an avid tea drinker and I was looking at my tea stains in my teacup and I was thinking, wait a minute, that's actually like quite a similar effect. Not the very same, but a similar effect. And I thought, okay, maybe there's a way to transfer these little flakes of um, tea dust that uh, settle here in the tea. Maybe it's possible to actually like transfer those onto a model and I did some tests before and uh, yeah this is uh, here what I came up with and I think sometimes it's um, really good also as I said like in the other small sum up video is sometimes it's really good to um, just go with your guts go with your feeling do something stupid just try it out because uh, like we would never like see like improvement in our hobby if we just don't try things out. Miniature painting is really a lot about trying things out, making mistakes and learning how to correct them. All right, let's have a look on how that tea weathering works. Thanks for watching, thanks for your support and try out more stupid stuff. All right, so here we are ready to paint the shoulder pad. And we can see the shoulder pad um, is still in our base color um, from the foundation, which was like the chaos black from underneath and some of the Games Workshop red bone here on the top and you can see it was actually like plenty of red bone because we're aiming for like an overall quite a bright paint job actually and um, I want to maintain here that um, off-white because I think that gives us um, a really nice foundation for like the weathering that is going to happen on here and we will do something special for that. So let's have a look on what colors we have on the palette. And on the palette you can see we have some Schmigge Titanium White over here. Here we have some of the Red Bone base color from Citadel. Here we have some Secret Weapon Orange Rust. Here we have some of the Model Color Turquoise. Here we have two contrast paints, the Flash Tears Red and the Sago Brown. Here we have the Scrofulous Brown from the Game Color range. And here we have some Model Color Black. And I'm thinning it down a bit. We are aiming for like between light and medium layer consistency actually. I just want to apply that first to actually see if the color is somewhat the same because I never tried the red bone out of the pot before. And yeah, the color really seems quite close. So I'm using that here to establish the area close to the main highlight, picking up white and adding the white here where I want my highlight. And I want that if we look at it here also from the front that we can really nicely see that band of highlight here. And it also should like read in somewhat the same intensity than the highlight on the forehead. Continuing a bit here with a slightly thinner red bone in the brush to preserve also some of that darker color here. But uh, where we apply this glaze, we are also reducing the visible grain quite a bit. Going a bit more opaque here to 
where I want the highlight to be stronger visible. And turning the figure around and doing the same thing to the other side. First establishing the wrath bone as like a pig layer and then going in there with some white. And here regarding the shape of the highlight I want to get it like slightly rounded out so we really have also like um, a round highlight matching that round shape of the shoulder pad. Here if you look at it from the side we can see that this here is again like a slightly different volume on the surface and it requires its own highlight and we will add that here. Okay, we will also mix like a slightly darker shade and um, we're adding also a tiny bit of the black and also the orange rust. And we're continuing here articulating the highlight. And you can see I'm so here aiming for still like a little bit of a round or rounded out highlight reflection. And mixing also like a slightly darker shadow shade here. <laughs> and you can see it's not only slightly darker, it's actually quite a, quite a bit darker. But I want to get that here on the surface um, to be able to also um, get like a darker core shadow that I can soft out just with water. Um, sometimes you just need like a slightly darker tone to really make that like work and that you see what you're doing there. So we'll also continue here. Also here a bit more like a wash so it also gathers here really in the recesses of these scratches. Now I'm just wet blending it here on the surface. Okay, I will just continue like that on the other side and we'll be back for the next step. Okay, I continued a little bit here also to the other side of the shoulder pad and I've also introduced that um, shadow here. Not really super precise, but we will 
continue detailing things out here a little bit more with glazes actually. And uh, here again you might think like okay if we're going to uh, weather um, this year like strongly why are we paying so much attention to get like a decent transition on the surface done before and I think this is really like something quite important if you have something nice and um, clean contrasting something uh, very weathered you have like a stronger contrast overall because you have that um, contrast of like the newer material and the nice transitions and also these like chipped off and um, decayed areas. So we want to make sure that definitely also our highlights are strong enough here. Feathering that out here towards the shadow. And you can see consistency wise working with something like between medium and light glaze tone consistency. Okay, I think so far so good for our initial tone here. Um, we can do a little bit of glazing to the here towards the shadow area. But um, I think for the next step I want to add like a stronger contrast in color to outline these elements here, like the buttons, and also to get like a bit better definition towards some of the edges here. Okay, we will mix a tone for that. Taking some of the orange rust and a little bit of black. And we're again working with the opaque. So you can see I just took off the shoulder pad to be actually able to access that area a little bit better. And I want to use like the same tone that I've used to outline the rivets actually to get like a nice and strong separation here. And we're using that to get like a little bit of outlining work and definition done also here in between those raised trims. When I'm in a certain area I'm also picking out some of these scratches, especially the deeper ones. But you can see there's really like a nice variation of deeper and fine scratches as well. And we're also working a little bit with the Psycho Brown here for these really deep scratches. I'm 
also mixing like a highlight color here. From plenty of the white and some of the red ball. And I'm using that to add highlights always to the lower side of each of these larger scratches for sure. And also some of these like medium deep ones. Alright, I will just continue with those glazes here. We will show some of that in a speed up and we'll be back once that step is done. Okay? All right, this is how the shoulder pad looks now at this stage. And um, I like the look. It's quite bright, but um, we want to take it off to do uh, like something uh, quite particular here for the weathering. And um, as I explained in the introduction here, we're going to do um, uh, weathering with tea as the next step. And the shoulder pad here is quite ideal because um, it's um, a piece that we can still take off and uh, otherwise there would be uh, definitely something to do before um, approaching the skin. We will just take this element off. All right, if we have a look at uh, the surface here of our cooled down black tea, we can see that we have these interesting chunks floating around and this is exactly what we want to catch up here using the shoulder pad. And this is really like a daunting moment. But we will just take it here, dip it into the tea. Okay, I just dipped it in, uh, actually, actually I just dipped it in some water to rinse it off. And this was actually way more the look that uh, I wanted to go for. So we're letting that dry now and applying a second coat in a minute. I figured out that uh, I can actually also scoop some of these here carefully with a spoon in a glass of water. Here we are with the shoulder pad again, trying now to catch some of these elements. And you can see we can really um, scoop them up actually quite controlled here. Um, we, are, we have to let that dry entirely before we continue with another layer here. Okay, so here we are, dipping it in again. dry again. Yeah, I think that is like really quite an astonishing result. Um, we will let that uh, dry, put it back on the model and see how we can like get a bit more like a controlled look again. Okay, all right. So here we are with our tea stained shoulder pad and I really like the look. I think uh, it has something quite unique and um, I think it's perfect also if you actually want to get loads of bottles done. Uh, you could line up everything and then just uh, dip them all through. I mean it's a hard to control process but I think the result is really cool. We will continue detailing things out a little bit again with highlights. Okay. 
and I just want to pick out like a few edges here, not all of them. And I also want to add like a few bits of uh, like leaking rust here, and I'm doing that with some of the orange rust. Add water in the back of the brush, just adding it here. So here to some of these rounder dots that I've uh, got from like the dipping in the tea. And I want that they, especially the ones here to the top, really look like there are like indentations in the surface and damage in like the white material. So we're using those here just with a bit of the orange brown. And you can see the effect of the tea is also um, like it's not super durable, but uh, at least we can just paint over it here without uh, varnishing it. I think here for these um, like uh, rivets or studs, I want to get like again a bit more of like a reflective look, but I want to stay in that uh, tone, so I'm. Um, just going in here with a bit more of the orange first. And I'm thinning down the orange a bit and adding white to the tip. For 
last dabbing of the white. Now I'm going in there with the back of the brush. up a bit more white to also add like a reflection here to that ring that is around the rivet. Alright, I already like the look. I will just refine the highlights a tiny bit off cam and we'll be back to add like the secondary reflection. Okay, I've softened out the highlights and also added already here like that small line of a back reflection. And that is what we'll also do to the larger ones, mixing some of the orange rust here with white. And we're ending that line as if we would have light bouncing back here from the ground. A bit more orange. Going a tiny bit brighter. And I want to add a bit of oxidation, and I will do that with some turquoise, some of the scrofulous brown to get it a little bit more green, and some black. And we'll use that also again first just on the tip. Adding it here to the shadow areas a bit more. Okay, or also adding a bit of white. And just with a wet brush, we're rubbing over it to pull it down here. Again, also to have these oxidation stains.
and I want to use a little bit of that tone, but really, really thin it down. So we're working with a very light glaze consistency, and I want to and I want to introduce that here, the shadow area, just to have like a slight color variation. And to also tie things here a little bit together. And I still want to balance also like a few of these small highlights here on the edge. Yeah, I think we can also just go ahead and paint um, this element here of the ring. I want to do that more in like a steel tone and we'll mix like a very dark blue from the turquoise with some black. And just with having the base color in the back of the brush, adding a bit of white here and just dabbing it here to get like a rather rough placement here for our blending. Going back in there just with a bit of pure white. And I don't really want to do a lot to that ring, so I want to have it heavily corroded and I'm adding quite a bit of orange here to the sides. White and a bit of the psycho brown here. We can just also create like a highlight color here for the belt. Also, just stippling here on the surface to play a little bit with like the grain. And because areas like that definitely also always catch some attention, we have to make sure that the detailing here really matches nicely. And I'm just working out that area by adding also a few blood stains and leaks here. And I'm doing that with the contrast color Flash Tears Red.
also adding a tiny bit of the red glaze in some areas. Alright, so far so good. Um, I just want to add like a little bit of control dry brushing to the horns before we're actually ready to do like the final Nurgle touches. Okay, we will just use that old flathead brush here as a dry brush. And you can really see how the dry brushing picks out all that amazing texture that we've created with the melted plastic. All right, this concludes the chapter here for our Nurgle guy, and we see us for the final Nurgle touches. All right.